exception to close source i'm closing out everything so in our source we have authentication we have data domain finally we have the presentation layer so we have presentation inside of the presentation you could have the app app directory if you have more than one um state management solution maybe some, for example i use both provider and block at the same time so if in that one feature you have both provider and block you don't want to put them just bare 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 bones on the presentation layer you want to put them into something so personally i in this particular example we're only using the block so i'm just going to use the block we can also use cuba um this I don't know if I should teach both block and cube, but whatever. Um, let's start with block. No, not a file. So delete. You want to create a folder called block. So you can either use a block or a cube, whichever ones, whichever one you want to use, right? So this is not a block tutorial. But I'm actually going to teach how to use both block and qubit in this example. So let's go ahead and start off with block. So first of all, in order to do this, first of all, you create a folder called block. And then inside of it, you go to new block class if you're using the block, else new qubit class. How do you get these? You can go to your plugins and search for block. You can find this, this little thingy, block by Phalangel. If you're on Android, sorry, if you're on VS Code, you can also search, you can also find block as well. So in here, I'm going to create a new block class and it's going to ask for a name. I'm going to call that authentication, the name of the layer. So we want authentication block. You can also call it auth alone. And then for the style, we're going to use equatable and hit OK. And it's going to create three files for you the block the event and the state so whenever the user hits on the button we actually don't want to call a function when we're using block we call the event we will simply go and say the block we call the block and we say block dot add an event then we add an event from in here we have some block tutorials on this channel so you can go ahead and go search in this channel to find our block tutorials so i'm not going to go so deeply into how everything in block works but i'm just going to give you examples of both block and cuba so but then let's go ahead and start building out so first of all with our event we extend equatable and we create our event what event are we going to be handling what are we going to be doing in this event simply means what is the user going to be doing the user is going to be hitting the create user button so for that we create a class called since it extends equatable, let's go ahead and override list objects get props from the equatable and we equate it to an empty list since since we don't have anything inside this class. So let's go ahead and also add another event class um create user event. It will send um, authentication authentication event, and then in here you collect as properties of this class. You collect whatever you need in order to create a user. So what do we need? First of all, we need a created at. Finally, finally we need um, a name and an avatar and that's that so we go ahead and create a constructor for this so let's go ahead and do that const create user event we can do final sorry this uh, required this dot created at required this dot name oh my required this dot avatar that's that. We can go ahead and override this, copy that, paste it here, and taking the 
created at the name and the avatar. So an event will be equal to a different event if they're created at name and avatar are the same. And also if they're both create user events. Then finally, we'll, we also need to get users event extends authentication authentication event constant get users event required no we don't require anything at all sorry i'm just speeding through this we can no we don't need to override this because we've already overridden it in the parent class over here so this was why i did it here so that when we have something that doesn't have any properties we don't have to go ahead and override it again because we already did that in the parent so in here what is your problem we need to import flutter block and block as well so let's go ahead and import those two uh not import at them so flutter pub add flutter uh, flutter block uh we also need to add the block and flutter object so we need both the flutter block and the actual block package so we've added both of them so on authentication event what will happen when there's an authentication event what do we want to happen we will be emitting some states but then first of all let's go ahead and take care of this when there's an authentication event we're not going to do anything at all but then when there is a get no first of all let's do the create user event when there's a create user event we don't care about the raw authentication event if you had one loader then maybe you could do that if you had if you wanted for example, to know when there's two different states, you want to know particularly when there's two different states. But you don't need to use the raw event. You don't need to do anything special when uh, or any event at all gets triggered. So when you would want to use this part is when, for example, if we had a create user event, then we would want to show a loader. And if we had a get users event, we also want to show a loader. If we had um, a delete user event you will still want to show a loader so in that case you could do on authenticate user event then just show a loader all the time emit loading state all right but then in my case when we have a create user event i want to know in my loader that we're loading for create user so that i could display the message saying creating user or getting users i will show you what i'm doing in the ui when i'm done doing that so we're not going to create invoke or create the function in here where um let's go ahead and abstract that into a different function so i'm going to call that create user handler and also on uh, what other event do we have on get users event let's go ahead and have the get users handler So now after that, we can go ahead and inside of our block, this is where we start taking our dependencies. What does the block depend on? The block will depend on your use cases. This is how clean architecture works. So final, what are our two use cases? We have two use cases for this particular feature and that those will be the create user. So we have create user and we can call that create user remember my dependencies i prefer to always make them private users get users and in here we can go ahead and take them in the constructor so final create user create user we, we're doing it this way because in a named constructor i'm making them named because there's two of them i don't want to i prefer to have named constructors when i have more than one argument to be to be given so that way i know what i'm giving where i'm giving that so when you have a named argument a named construct a named constructor you don't and you have private properties you, you cannot say this dot create user and then 
this dot get users that wouldn't work you can see name pram name params can't start with an underscore so we have to explicitly state their type so create user create user what why did i oh my oh my oh my why am I making a final? It should be required rather than final. Required get users, get users. And then finally, we can instantiate that before we call the super constructor. So we can do that by saying create user will be equal to the create user from the constructor, and the get users will be equal to the get users from the constructor. Delete this person. Now, Let's go ahead and start working. So, we have to create our handlers. So, future void, they're always going to be void because they're never returning anything. Handler, we can simply say async. Now, for the handler, it actually gives us something or expects something from us. You can see over here an emitter and the state. It gives us an emitter and the event rather. So first of all, let's go ahead and take the event. What event are we taking? In this case, it's the create user event. And we're going to call that event. And then finally, it gives us an emitter of a state. What type of state? The authentication state. I hope I spelt that correctly. And that's the emit. So now when this create user handler gets called before we do anything, we want to emit a state. And what is that state? We want to emit a loading state. And what this was why I wanted to create these two separately and not use a general authentication event for handling every loading state. So for that reason, I'm going to go into my authentication state and create a state. So every state by default will have the equalizer and they will all be constant. So constant authentications initial. Then we have our class creating user extends authentication state. And we have a constant creating user. And that's it it's a loading state we have a second loading state for getting user users extends authentication and we can have constant getting users and then finally we have the success dates uh, user created extends authentication state constant user created and when the user gets created we actually will be giving the user two things no 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 we're not going to be giving it anything when the user gets created we will be giving something when we get our users so users loaded then authentication date constant users loaded and we will be receiving this dot users. It will be a list of user. Remember, outside of the remote data source, we do not state that we're using the explicit model. So in here, we're going to say users, and we will override the list object get props and now over here in our users i don't want to have to make it check against the users users i rather want it to check against the users ids i think my users have ids don't they yes they do have ids so 
instead of doing that, instead of doing this, users, it will be a list in the list. So it will basically check if their lists are equal. But, but remember that Dart has difficulties with checking lists equality. So instead of doing that, sorry, I'm actually just going to take the users and then map them. And instead of equating based on the list of users, we're, we're, we're actually going to create a different list from from our list of users so from each user we're just simply going to take their id user id dot to list so when we get a use a list of users we take all of their ids and create a list of user ids from it and then we check it against the next users loaded state if their ids are also the same as these ids so this is essentially what we're doing finally we have one more state, um, authentication error. And for this one, we have authentication error. And it will have a message, this dot message. And we can override once again the list. This time I'm just going to say string because it's one string. Get props. Over here we can also even change this to int since it's a list of integer IDs. A oh, string, so also a list of string. So get props, it will be a uh, the message. So if the messages are equal, then it's the same error state. So in this case, we will emit a constant uh, creating user event. Creating user states, not an event. So we emit that and then we go ahead and use the create. So the result, we save this in the result. So we call the use case. Remember that the use case has a dot call. Sorry, final result will be equal to await create user. Remember that it has a dot call, but that means we can just invoke that use case. And then we pass in the, what are we passing in? We pass in the create user params. And then it's created that will simply be the event dot created that. Its name will be the event dot name. Its avatar will be the event dot avatar because the event in this case is a create user event and the create user event already collects these from the user when they hit that button. Oh my. So save. So this is our result. Now our result is, is going to be an either failure or void. So this is what happens. The block. The user will hit a button, the button will emit and will send an event or it will dispatch an event to the block. The block receives that event and it checks what type of event is it. It's a create user event. Then it will go into the create user handler. It will call the use case that's related to it, meaning the use case that we've linked to that event. In this case, the create user for create user event. Let me add a constant over here. Now, when that happens, it will call that event and give it the proper data. After it gives it that, that use case goes ahead to call, where is it? Oh, no. It goes ahead to call the repository, and the repository will call the data source. So later on down the line, when we're injecting our dependencies, you will see how everything connects.